So do you really need to push every set all the way to muscle failure in order to get the most muscle growth and the most muscle strength? Today, we're gonna go over a video by Dr. Lane Norton that talks about this exact topic. As you know, I'm a huge proponent of muscle failure and not an advocate for reps and reserve training and stay to the very end of the video because I'm gonna go over everything Dr. Lane Norton says here and explain why training to failure is still the best. Because I have interviewed several of the top researchers in muscular hypertrophy for my podcast now, Brad Schoenfeld and Stuart Phillips, and one of the consistent things they say is the most important thing for muscle hypertrophy is to have sufficient intensity with your training. That is clearly correct and irrefutable. If you look at old principles of neurology, like Henneman size principle, effort or intensity is hands down the most important aspect of your exercise. If intensity of effort is low, muscle involved in the exercise is relatively low. And the more intense you make it, AKA the closer to muscle failure you push when it comes to resistance training, the more muscle fibers your nervous system recruits. And this is something we've known since as early at least 1938. So finally, most of the more intellectual YouTubers, influencers are in agreement that intensity of effort is extremely, extremely important. And this is good because this is something I've been saying for over the last 10 years, and finally people are starting to agree. We have a couple of studies now looking at either training to failure or one or two reps shy of failure and showing no difference in hypertrophy. And some of them actually show maybe a little bit better strength adaptations in people who stop shy of failure. If you are taking multiple sets all the way to failure, multiple times a week, unless you are PED enhanced, you are almost certainly going to overtrain. Now, a lot of average gym goers, they don't really overtrain. They're training way shy of failure because their ability to estimate their proximity to failure is usually pretty poor. They're training to whatever they think is failure, but it's probably about three, four, maybe even five reps in reserve. So I would imagine the reason some studies show that strength is better when you're stopping shy of failures because they're not overtraining as much as the individuals who are pushing all the way to failure with all these sets every week. I have failure. A new study came out, uh, Brad Schoenfeld's on the paper, as well as some other really great authors in hypertrophy, and they were looking at 10 weeks of resistance training in people who were very well trained. The RIR of one group just trained an RIR of one. And in the other group, they started out at an RIR of four and gradually increased the intensity as the study went on so that by the final week, they were doing an RIR of one in both five week training blocks. And at the end of the study, they looked at like cross-sectional area of the vastus lateralis of the quads and the triceps. And they also looked at one rep maximum for squat, one rep maximum for bench. And also they had people do their 10 rep maximums before they started the study. And then at the end of the study had them do it again. And they also had them find a new 10 rep max at the end of the study. That means both groups had the same amount of practice, therefore the same amount of neurological adaptation between the two exercises. And the reason this is important is you've probably heard me say a million times, one rep max is not just a measure of muscle strength because since the bench press and the squat are still technical movements, although they appear very simple, there is a high amount of skill involved in doing those movements. And the more skill acquisition you have through practicing these movements, the more weight you're going to be able to move just from neurological adaptations alone. So if the two groups are practicing this movement the same amount, then they've literally had the same amount of practice and it makes sense that the strength increase would be the same between the two. But no, he did say that there is no size difference between the group doing multiple sets to failure, the group doing multiple sets just shy of failure. But it seems he's missing the point here. The point of going to muscle failure is to be able to do less sets to get the desired stimulus. So you could take three, four or five sets working up to the point where you are exhausted by the end of the fourth or fifth set and barely able to grind out those last couple of reps where you're creating a lot of intensity and therefore a lot of muscle fiber recruitment. Or you could just do one or at most two sets, taking your set all the way to muscle failure all the way to the highest amount of effort as possible in getting those fast switch motor units involved in less sets. Now, some people may require more attempts, meaning they do one set, they try to get as close to failure as they possibly can, and maybe they're able to get closer to failure or higher amounts of effort on that second set, attempting to reach those motor units they may not have previously reached on that first set. And this is where I believe more than one set could potentially be useful, but 
it's not for the sake of more reps and more sets. Because how many times the weight goes up and down is literally irrelevant when it comes to how your body recruits muscle tissue. Effort, intensity, how hard you push is absolutely everything. And believe it or not, you could recruit all the available motor units with no volume, no lifting or lowering the weight at all through just static isometric training. If you push against something as hard as you possibly can and your muscles can no longer produce any force momentarily, you're recruiting all the motor units that your body can recruit. And you've essentially done no repetitions at all with no movement. So the belief that sets and reps are relevant when it comes to stimulating your muscles for growth is just not. It does appear that to get maximum muscle activation, you do have to train closer to failure with isolation exercises. But with compound exercises, it appears you get a greater amount of muscle activation further away from failure than you do with isolation exercises. All right, this part of Lane Norton's video really, really confused me because this made absolutely no sense at all. Now, he doesn't provide any reference or any explanation physiologically of why this is, which is why I was kind of, I kind of thought it was silly to include in the video. Now, he does go on to explain that when you're doing compound movements, they feel harder. Okay, well, what does feel harder mean? More effort, more intensity. So maybe that's what he was referring to, which is something I have actually noticed myself. And you may remember old school bodybuilders or old school weightlifters say, well, you need to bench squat and deadlift because those exercises activate more muscle or train the most muscle and stimulate the most testosterone and make you grow the most. But that's not the reason. It's got nothing to do with any of that. It's got everything to do with people generally push way harder on those movements, more intense in those movements. So people probably noticed people who squat, bench, and deadlift in the old school versus people that didn't grew more muscle. And people are generally more motivated to push harder on bench, squat, and deadlift, probably just to impress people. So to wrap up this video, here's the main issue with this. The title of the video says, do you really need to push every set to the brink of failure? So this is implying that multiple sets are required for improvements in strength and muscle growth. And they're simply not. The point of training to fail is to recruit a lot of muscle fibers efficiently. Now you could do three, four, five sets short of failure and eventually get to those repetitions where exertion is very high, effort is very high, and your nervous system is recruiting a lot of muscle tissue. Or you could just get straight to the point with one or maybe at most two sets by training as hard as you can on one or maybe two sets. So if you are training to failure, the worst thing you could possibly do is multiple sets. If you are truly training as hard as you possibly can, taking those sets all the way to failure, by necessity, you're gonna to have to reduce your volume because your body is not going to be able to recover from the same way it would as if you were doing your sets with three, four, five reps in reserve. And this is why I still think training to failure is key. I'm able to build a 220, 225 pound physique training one or two times a week is because I take all my exercises to failure. And then I reduce the amount of sets I do to one and maybe sometimes two sets. So I'm spending about one sixth of the time in the gym than most people do in getting the same if not a better stimulus way more efficiently. That's why I choose to train to failure. I also know to reduce the volume so that way I don't overtrain. The good news is I filmed a ton of high quality in-depth videos on how to execute intense, efficient, and safe workouts in my school group. You can try my school group free for seven days and go through all of the videos that I recorded recently with in-depth demonstration, explanation, and execution on a ton of different exercises, including body, weight, machines, free weights, you name it, and a bunch of other videos going over exercise principles like how intensity of effort works, how to diet and eat correctly, and how to program your own workouts. You can also post your questions or DM me directly in my school group with any specific questions that you have and I can answer them for you and help get you on the right track. Click the link in the description, join free for seven days. I also post multiple new videos during the week. So if you wanna dial in your training and learn how to maximize your results while spending less time in the gym, click the link below, join my school group. And don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell notification icons. So you'll be notified when I drop more videos showing you how to get in the best shape of your life and save time doing it.